All right, so what does it actually mean for a peripheral to be memory mapped? I think the term can be a little bit confusing. Certainly when I was first starting out, I thought, for instance, it meant that like a DMA capable peripheral would like DMA its contents to RAM and then they would be like back and forth, you know, manipulating RAM and then the DMA contents would be, you know, pulled back. But that's not actually the case. The way you should think about a memory mapped peripheral is that when the memory controller would otherwise be going to RAM, it sees that this should instead be destined for some particular peripheral. It hands it to the peripheral via whatever peripheral access mechanism exists on the system, and then the peripheral decides where it goes from there. So we'll see some examples of that. So in the first case, let's imagine that we're talking about non-memory mapped I.O. Here we have a couple of assembly instructions. It's taking the address foot, putting it into RAX, and then reading from RAM at that address into register VL. So if we follow our little bouncing ball here, it would make a stop at the registers to look up that this RAX corresponds to address foot. Instruction decoder would pull out that kind of information, hand it to the memory controller, and then the memory controller would say, okay, well, the instruction decoder tells me there's some sort of memory access here, and it's trying to access address foot. What do I actually do with that? Well, the memory controller has to keep a giant lookup table of all sorts of different things that have to do with different memory ranges. And so it could be the case that it's in this range and then it goes to RAM, or it's in this range and it goes to a PCI express port, or this range and it goes to LPC or SPI. And so the memory controller is responsible for looking up information about where a particular address should actually be mapped. And again, this is the BIOS's job to set up a whole bunch of configuration in order to say, you know, this range right here should actually be mapped to that peripheral. That range there should be mapped to that peripheral. Configures all a bunch of internal registers of the CPU and memory controller, and then the memory controller uses it for lookup in the future. So let's consider the if it's not MMIO case. In that case, our bouncing ball is going to follow this path here, and the memory controller is going to send the request out to DRAM, the proper memory. And then it'll get back the memory and stick it into the register BL, as you would expect. Now let's consider the case where the address corresponds to a PCIe device, and therefore it's a memory mapped I.O. So I just, you know, randomly picked this address. Let's say that this address corresponds to a gigabit Ethernet card. That address is once again put into a register and then the assembly reads from memory, memory, and that memory is actually going to be routed down to the PCIe device. So here the bouncing ball goes down to the PCIe hardware. It's going to go across a DMI link down to the PCH. PCH is going to send it over to the PCIe network card. And then once it reaches the card, that card is going to say, okay, well, I know that they were actually accessing, you know, this offset, you know, offset F007 within some particular range that was assigned to me. And then that particular hardware makes the decision to say that offset corresponds to some registers, corresponds to some memory, whatever it corresponds to. It could be some other non-volatile memory attached to the PCIe network card. Whatever it corresponds to, that's up to the chunk of hardware to decide. And then it chooses, goes out, grabs the information that was being requested, sends it back via the PCIe bus, goes back all the way up to the memory ultimately being fed into the register. And from your perspective on the CPU, well, it just looks like any other memory access, right? And that's what memory mapped I.O. means. You look like you're accessing memory, but in reality you're accessing doing I.O. input output to some peripheral device. And then one last example, let's say it was the SPI device, which we've seen before, the BIOS flash chip. Well, this particular range, FFFFF007, is going to correspond to the SPI flash chip because we already said that particular range is always mapped to the SPI flash and there's nothing you can do about it. And so the memory controller again sends it down via DMI to the PCH and then it's going to say, well, this is actually destined for the SPI hardware. SPI hardware will use the actual SPI protocol to go talk to a SPI flash chip and then it's going to again decide, you know, what is this? Well, it's going to be non-volatile storage. It's going to fetch some value, read it back, and ultimately it gets put into the registers like any other memory read. So from the CPU's perspective, what does it look like, look like to access this? Well, it just looks like, you know, the memory controller fetches from memory and then through some sort of magic, it just accesses a spy flash chip and on you go. 
get the memory, pull it back, stick it into the registers, right? So that's the magic of MMIO. So now let's talk about what happens when you make some slides and you stare at them for too long. So I've been staring at this slide for way too long. And so I'm looking at the CPU picture and I'm saying, you know, you know what that looks like to me? Well, what do you think it looks like to me? What does it look like to you? Now, if you say it doesn't look like anything at all, you might want to get yourself checked out. But if you say, I think that looks like a Ninja Turtle in proper stealth attire, then congratulations, your creative mind, the likes of which the world has never known, you're going to do okay. All right, well, that's all we need to know for now about Memory Maps I.O. and Memory Map Configuration by the BIOS. We will come back to the memory map configuration a little bit and fill in some of the bits that I actually kind of skipped over here, the TOLUD, TOUD, TOM. There's a whole bunch of acronyms and abbreviations that have to do with the memory map, but thankfully we don't really need to know them right now to try to get where we're trying to go, which is the flash write protection. But it'll come back into play again once we talk about SMRAM later and a little bit in the context of PCIe configuration address space.